Well, hi everybody. We get a lot of questions here on the channel about my musical background and the songs and style of music that I play when I'm demoing instruments. And also some curiosity about how I wound up in the piano business in the first place. So here are the 28 most frequently asked questions we get about me. How old was I when I began playing the piano? Three years old. Well, I started with Suzuki in London, Ontario. Then in my teens, I studied with Harold Rudolphs for classical piano, uh, an organist uh, by the name of Keith Bingham on pipe organ. I studied with Ted Winter for choir accompaniment and direction. And then I got some early jazz instruction from Chase Sanborn and Dave Restivo, two Toronto jazz greats. And eventually I wound up at the University of Toronto in their jazz performance degree, where I studied with Phil Nimmons, Gary Williamson, and Brian Dickinson. Do I have perfect pitch? Yes, I do. Okay, here we go. C sharp, E flat, E. Oops. G and A. <laughs> C. G. That was A flat and A. C sharp. D. What was my biggest obstacle when I was learning piano and how did I overcome it? Well, I would say finding the motivation to practice. Uh, for me, it was really the thrill of performance and the satisfaction of success that drove me to get better. Otherwise, I'd have been a very lazy piano student. Uh, but I am a perfectionist and I hate not delivering when it counts. So find that thing that drives you to deliver when it counts and see if you can somehow integrate that into your musical life. At least that's what I did. Do I currently offer piano lessons? Uh, I used to teach, but unfortunately time just is not permitted at this point. Um, but I do love the exercise of kind of trying to break down the insights and strategies from my own experience and delivering it to someone else in a way that unlocks a new level of expression or achievement for them. What was the first piano I ever played? Well, the very first piano I played was a Yamaha U1 from 1966 in black satin with two pedals. Uh, it was my mom's piano and she had it when she was a teenager and it was my main practice instrument until I was about 12 years old. Which piano do I currently own or use at home? Well, as some of you may know, I currently play a Kawhi Novus 5 and a Roland Phantom 08 at home. Um, I've got small kids in the house and fairly crazy weird work hours and a digital or hybrid is pretty much the only practical option for me at this point. I'm just lucky that they've got to be as good as they are at about the time I needed them to be. Do I sing or play any other instrument other than piano? Uh, well, I will occasionally sing harmony behind my uber-talented wife, but I wouldn't consider myself to be a singer. Uh, I played some violin, French horn, and trumpet when I was younger, uh, but I never got to a professional level on anything other than the piano and maybe organ. What is the best piano that I've ever played? Good question. Uh, I played a concert-sized Ravenscroft piano uh, at the 2016 NAMM show, which was just, like, mind-blowing. Um, but in terms of sort of regular production pianos, the 9-foot Beckstein at Number 9 Studios in Toronto was always up there for me. Um, I remember playing a Yamaha CFX uh, when I was down in New York City around 2018 or so that was like really impressive. And I also remember even just from this year's NAMM show, uh, they had a Shigeru 9-foot SKEX at the Kauai booth that was like is stunning. Am I mainly improvising when demonstrating pianos in review and comparison videos or am I playing something that already exists? So almost all the music I demonstrate is improvised. I have been improvising for probably close to 25 years now as kind of my main mode of music making and so it's something that's pretty uh, kind of fluid and effortless at this point and I'm able to really allow kind of my creative impulses to make it to the piano without very much kind of intellectual friction. So for demonstrating instruments, I prefer doing it that way since each piano kind of has its own strengths and I like to be able to respond to those highlights in the moment. What advice do I have for someone looking to get into improvisation? And what is the best approach to learn in terms of how to improvise? 
Well, that, that could be like a 50 hour answer, but I'll try and be uh, brief. Um, I would say improvising is like learning a language, meaning that the idea that I'm completely making things up out of thin air isn't really an accurate way to put it. Um, I'm drawing on other music and other artists past vocabulary and I'm applying it to the moment with my own kind of sensibilities and everybody agrees on the rules and the vocabulary. So learn the words by listening slavishly to the improvisers who you love the sound of the best. I remember listening hundreds of times to Bill Evans, Oscar Peterson, uh, Chick Corea records until I could anticipate every little detail of every track. And that needs time to absorb before that information becomes a voice for your own creative impulses. But I do credit my biggest leaps forward in improvisation to listening and then transcribing from my favorite musical heroes. That's what's going to give you the language so that when you do finally have those creative impulses yourself, you'll have the words to speak. What was the best musical advice I ever received? The minute you try and make your solo good is the minute it won't be. It was basically a warning from one of my teachers at U of T uh, against being inauthentic in favor of trying to force some kind of an impressive moment. It never works. You've just got to be musically honest at all moments. Which musical achievement am I proudest of? So I was invited to appear in the Oscar Peterson documentary that they released, I believe in 2022. Um, and that recommendation was based on my first trio record that I put out back in 2016. So the opportunity to perform on camera was awesome, but I think it was the recognition that my album was seen in that regard that was really the gratifying part. How do I come up with my chord voicings? So for people who aren't jazz players, chord voicings uh, would be sort of the arrangement um, of the notes uh, within a chord. Um, because obviously you can just have a basic triad, but you can spread that out across the whole keyboard. And when you have a chord that has seven or eight notes in it, you know, you get to mix and match, you know, how those notes um, are, are arranged and it really changes the texture of the chord. C major seven, C major seven, C major seven. So that is a chord voicing. Chord voicings and harmonic ideas uh, to me are like learning how to use more complicated combinations of ingredients, let's say if you were cooking. Um, at first, everybody starts with the basics, you know, salt, sugar, fat, garlic, butter, whatever. Um, musically speaking, I'd equate that with using sort of root, third, fifth, seventh, and then you start adding more like your ninth and eleventh and thirteenth. But at some point, even that gets a little boring and you start looking for extra flavors to entertain your own senses. Uh, and then you get into like inverted roots or pivot notes or polychords or stuff like that. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's accidental and you hear something and then you go back and figure out what happened, you know, after the fact. Or in other cases, you'll have a sound or a tension that you actually hear in your head uh, and you think it's going to work and you just go for it. And maybe most of the time it does and sometimes it doesn't. How did I discover jazz music? I remember the exact moment actually when I realized how much I love jazz. Um, my dad was a huge Henry Mancini fan, he had a million records, and the first time I heard the Pink Panther come on and it hits that bridge with the big band shout chorus that falls away to the tenor solo, uh, like I remember every hair on my body was standing on end listening to that on full blast on my parents' stereo. I could not believe how just physically euphoric I felt. And honestly, I've been in love with that sound ever since. Do I actively tour or perform? Well, not so much the touring, you know, kids and life and business and all that kind of stuff, but I still do actively perform. Usually uh, one to two times per week and almost all of it is in and around the Toronto region. Uh, most of the performances are at kind of various theaters and art centers in the GTA. Um, and over the years, I've also been super lucky to be able to perform uh, with Larnell Lewis, Adrian Bent, and even a couple of sets with both Wit and Marcellus and Snarky Puppies Michael League. What is my fondest performing experience? I've got lots of really great musical memories. I'm not sure I can narrow that down to one. Uh, but the worst is an easy one for me to pick from. Uh, I was doing a lot of R&B gigs on Toronto's College Street Strip 
in the early 2000s, and I was called up on stage to sit in with one of the top studio bands of the time, and they called Rock With You by Michael Jackson. I only vaguely knew the chorus, and I assumed that a pop tune wasn't going to be that hard to hear on the fly, and I have never been so absolutely obliterated and embarrassed on stage in my life. I went home immediately at like 2 in the morning, and I listened to that song a hundred times until I knew every note of every part on that track, and I promised myself I was never going to try and fake a song or style again. If I was given a choice, do I prefer playing solo piano or with a band? Um, if it's for any length of time, 100% I prefer playing with a band. Playing solo piano for more than about 15 or 20 minutes is like staring at yourself in the mirror. It can get extremely boring and you also get into this weird like self-conscious mode where you start to feel like everything you're playing is super contrived and, and awful um, versus having a really fun exchange of ideas and grooves with a group. Way more fun. Do I compose or record music? And do I have any CDs? Um, I have recorded one album under my own name and I have appeared on around 20 or so other CDs as a side musician, um, almost all in Toronto. How did I get into piano sales and when did I join Miriam Music? Uh, well, Alan Miriam, who is the founder and CEO of the company, uh, offered me a job all the way back in 2005 at a time where I myself was looking for a change. Um, I'd been playing a lot of wedding and corporate gigs and I was curious to get into some other possibilities, uh, though honestly at first sales was not one of them. Uh, so Alan started me at the company as a teacher and I did some MIDI arranging uh, and eventually I got interested in the sales team because of the technology that they were interacting with. I quickly realized that I loved the feeling of helping people um, learn about pianos, get excited about pianos, and using my own musical passions to kind of help create some of that excitement. Alan had a really massive influence in showing me virtually everything about the industry um, and how to approach sales with a lot of transparency and authenticity um, and kind of keeping customer education as, as a main cornerstone. So it's been an interesting challenge to try and create a musical experience for myself, which feels real, um, while at the same time bringing you know, a lot of enjoyment and authenticity to customers. And in a lot of way, what we do here on the YouTube channel is kind of a nice little encapsulation of really that whole journey. Am I a trained piano technician? And if not, why do I know so much about pianos? Well, uh, no, I'm not a trained piano technician, but I'm pretty mechanically minded and I do love learning how things work. But I have spent a lot of time with various piano technicians over the years, watching, asking, and sometimes just experimenting myself with the pianos. So I've had a chance to speak with a lot of piano designers and factory workers and managers over the year, and you kind of just absorb it. So I love it, and I love learning. If I wasn't working within the music industry, what would I be doing? Uh, well, I loved law and aviation. So both were on my list had I not heard the Pink Panther. Who knows? So aside from jazz, what style of music do I enjoy playing and listening to? Uh, indie pop, neo soul, gospel, classical, uh, funk, Motown. Yeah, if it's good music, uh, good chance I'm gonna like it. Who are some of my favorite bands or artists? Oscar Peterson, Chick Corea, Bill Evans, Anderson Pack, Ben Folds Five, uh, Snarky Puppy, uh, Peter Erskine Trio, Brad Meldow, Hiatus Coyote, Amy Winehouse, uh, Aretha Franklin, Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, The Band, Stevie Wonder, Prince. If I could sit down and talk or jam with one musician, dead or living, who would it be? Uh, Stevie Wonder, hands down. His energy and his talent is just like off the charts and I think it would just be absolutely mind-blowing. How did you and your wife meet and do they perform together? So my wife is also a musician and songwriter and we met at an industry Christmas party back in 2015 uh, and we got married in 2019. Um, regarding making music together, we actually can bicker like cats and dogs when we're just making music casually but we love performing together. She does a lot of streaming and YouTube work herself, uh, both with her own songs and some children's entertainment, and uh, she's a trained classical pop vocal performer. So we've definitely talked about doing an album. 
I don't know. Stay tuned. What are some of my hobbies and interests outside of music and piano? What? There's life outside of music and piano? Um, I'm a dad of two, so uh, that takes up a good chunk of time, but I also really like studying history and geography. Um, but honestly, besides that, music pretty well occupies the rest of my time in one fashion or another. Has anyone ever told me that I look like Ed Norton? Uh, yes. I also sometimes get John Cusack or Jeremy Renner or James McAvoy. Uh, although I'm still waiting for my body double casting call. So for people who have been following me here on the channel for a little while, I hope you guys enjoyed getting to know me a little bit more. We all sincerely appreciate all of your support, your questions and your interest as we've built this amazing community of music lovers and we'll see you back for more shortly. Thanks so much.